Hello dear friends. I am driving to Los Angeles to see my little niece who was born a few hours ago. And I've been trying to make this video. I was trying to make it in the lobby of the car rental place and it kept going long. So now I'm in the car and I'm still trying to get it down to under four minutes. So here we go. Choose your own adventure. Number one, I think that we could stand to make the choices a little bit more clear and a little bit more equally weighted um, so that every time the audience arrives at a choice, we, the actors, directors, whoever, we don't know exactly what they're going to pick. Um, right now, some of the choices are really tough or really juicy, you know, both options sound exciting. Other choices, like attack versus surrender, we're going to attack, it sounds more fun. So I would like for... For, at each juncture for both choices to be super, super juicy so the audience has kind of a difficult choice before them. Number two, um, structurally, here's what we know. We know that the first time through the story, the audience sees the Roderick line the way Poe wrote it. The second time through, they're going to most likely choose the Madeline line because they're going to want to see what happened on the other side. And then the third time through, most likely they're going to go with Roderick again because they want the opportunity to choose their way through that half of the house as well. So, we know that they're going to discover the doll bot line before they discover the vampire line. And as we think about ways to create the uncanny experience, I'm thinking about ways that we could build the, the vampire line, structure it in such a way as to use the audience's newfound knowledge about the doll bots in order to create something uncanny. Doll bots are now somewhat familiar territory for the audience by the time they get to round three. So the uncanny makes the familiar unfamiliar. So I have two ideas for how to do this. For, uh, the first idea is when we encounter the vampires, um, the audience and Bob, maybe they don't know they're vampires right away. Maybe they appear to be doll bots. Maybe we, maybe we think we're being attacked by an entire horde of doll bots. But in trying to defeat the doll bots by, what, tearing them apart, dismembering them, we discover that actually these doll bots don't work the way we think doll bots should. Um, maybe there's a deactivate switch or something that doesn't work. And we learn that actually these are vampires, not doll bots, and we are in a whole different kind of mess. Uh, it's not what we expected. So that's one idea. Another idea is to, to build upon the, the doll bot idea that yes, we do have doll bots, but they're vampiric doll bots. They live on blood. And actually, Madeline is not in love with Bob. She's been using him and, you know, like she, uh, they've lured Bob here in order to feed on him or, you know, spawn with him and create a lot of, you know, an orchard of little children to suck blood from. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, um, one way or the other, uh, using the audience expectation of the doll bot narrative to create an uncanny experience really excites me uh, in that third track. Lastly, the doll bot herself, Madeline, uh, Maddie Bot, is super cool and I really like her and I would like for her to be able to do more. Right now, actually, the doll bot uh, doesn't do a whole lot. She's a prop. I would love to develop that into a character played by an actor and give her some action to do. So I'm looking for ways to do that. Uh, the physician is another character who doesn't have a whole lot, and that could be fine, um, or it could be fun to introduce the physician a couple other places. Um, so I'm kind of looking for that. And finally, uh, I, I'm still kind of interested in this idea of an autopsy. I'm looking for a place where that might fit into the Choose Your Own Adventure section. Those are my thoughts. Thank you for listening. Four minutes, four, five seconds, and I didn't even crash. Okay, bye guys.